everyone. Welcome back to the Beauty of Grace. My name is Lynette, and um, I'm so glad that you come back to hear the good news of Christ. I want to talk to you today about free from the penalty of sin. Free from the penalty of sin. And so we're going to study the book of Hebrews. I have a few scriptures in here where we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about what does that exactly mean for a believer. Okay. And also it can be something that an unbeliever can look forward to if they decide to make Jesus Christ their Lord and their Savior. Okay. So Hebrews 9, and, and I'm, the translation I'm using is the New Living Translation. But Hebrews 9 and 13, uh, Paul is talking about the old system. He's giving them a contrast between the old system and the new system and the finished work of Christ. Okay, uh, Verse 13 says, under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer or a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial, ceremonial impurity. Okay, so Paul is talking about under the old covenant, um, in order for people to be right with God, they had to sacrifice animals. Okay, they had it was the animal's blood that would temporarily cleanse them from their sins, okay? And they had different type of, of, of purification things that they would do. They had ceremonial purification things, and then they had it where um, they could only eat certain meats and, and certain foods, okay? Um, so they had all these laws, they had all these rules and all these regulations, okay? And that was under the old covenant, right? And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are still, a lot of Christians and a lot of pastors are still putting people, believers, under the old covenant. And this is a covenant that has been replaced with the new covenant. The new covenant uh, is a covenant with better promises. Okay? Better promises. And it's a better covenant. All right? And because of the work of Jesus Christ, all believers, we are under the new covenant, not the old covenant. We don't have to go and get animals anymore for our sins. We don't have to go and do this and do that, right? So Jesus came. He was the perfect sacrifice. We don't have to do sacrifices anymore. Jesus have already done sacrifices. For us, he was a perfect sacrifice to redeem us, right, from our sins, all right? And verse 14 says this, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God, all right? I'm going to just stop right there, okay? Because what this is saying is, uh, because of the blood of Christ, right, uh, all of our sins have been taken away forever. We don't have to be sin conscious, okay, because Jesus has taken away our sins, all right? All we got to do is just tell him thank you, right? Okay, under the old covenant, even though they would do sacrifices, um, and they would, you know, do all these type of uh, sacrifices and things that they would do. Uh, it could never take away permanently their sins. The blood of those animals could only hide their sins temporarily. So they were always still sin conscious because they knew that if they didn't have their sins taken care of, they couldn't receive the blessings from God. And they knew that there would be punishment if God would see them as a sinner. If their sins had not been covered by uh, animals' blood, God would see them as a sinner and they would be punished. You can read a lot of the uh, books of the Old Testament and you will see how uh, the children of Israel, uh, they were punished a lot of times. 
you know, and that was because they did not have a per they did not have a sacrifice for their sin. They stopped sacrificing. And see, that's why under the old covenant, it was based on you, what you did, what you didn't do. Did you do enough of this? Did you do enough of that? It was based on that. It was based on the old covenant of law. And you know, what we have to understand is that old system has passed away. And in today terms, it has been deleted. That old covenant has been deleted, guys. Right? Jesus have come and given us a new covenant, a fresh covenant. Okay? We have a new and a fresh covenant. All right. So I'm going to go back to these scriptures right here. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Okay. That's verse 14. Now, verse 15 is this. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. All right? So everyone that calls on the name of Jesus, everyone that is saved, they are under this new covenant and they will receive eternal inheritance that God has promised us. So we have heaven, our home, right? We have eternal life. Okay? For Christ died to set them free. Now watch this. I want you to underline this sentence here at the end of the verse 15 for Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under that first covenant everyone that was that uh, that is born in this world is a sinner okay they are sinner because of what Adam did when God told Adam and Eve not to eat from that tree Okay, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they ate from it anyway. And when they ate from it, sin came unto the world. And since sin came into the world, everyone that is born in this world is a sinner. Right? That's that's just the way that's that's the way uh this is how God saw it. We were all born as sinners. Okay. So some people may say, well, that's not fair. I didn't eat the, the piece of fruit. Adam ate the piece of fruit. Eve ate it. But still, God said that we all would be sinners. All right. Everybody that is born is a sinner. Okay. So Jesus came. Right. So why did Jesus come? Because if God continued to see us as sinners, Right? We all would be going to hell. That would be a penalty of sin. We all would be going to hell. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how good you are. I don't care, you know, um, uh, what, what your services are. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Because we all would have been going to hell. Right? Because we would be sinners. But since Jesus came, the Bible says here, he died to set them free from the penalty of the sins, okay, that they had committed under that first covenant. So there was a penalty, right? If, if, if Just like under the old covenant, they would become punished if God would see them as sinners, they would become punished. They would be punished, Right? So Jesus came to set us free from the penalty of the sins. That means that we won't receive punishment. All Christians, we won't receive punishment from God because we have accepted his son. That's why Jesus came. He came to offer, to offer us this beautiful package of salvation so that we'll be set free from the penalty of sin. That it was a penalty. The penalty was going to be we're going to hell. That's the penalty of it. And Jesus now has set us free from that penalty. I'm, aren't you glad about it? 
I'm so glad about it. So in today's term, Jesus doesn't punish his children, right? He doesn't punish us. He doesn't cause accidents to happen to us to teach us a lesson. He doesn't make us sick to teach us a lesson, all right? He doesn't do that. Does he instruct us and teach us um, different things? discipline us. He disciplines us just like a father would. All right. But he doesn't do any, he wouldn't do anything to kill you or to hurt you, to physically hurt you, to teach you a lesson. Unlike sometimes we hear some preachers tell the saints that, that God is going to beat you and punish you. Well, God did that to Jesus. That's why Jesus took our place on the cross. He was beaten. He was punished. He took our place on the cross. So God is not going to do that to us today. All right. So this is why we are free from the penalty of the sins. We're free from it. Does that mean that we won't sin? Nope. Nope. We can sin sometime in thought. Sometimes we can sin by action. Some of the things that we do. Right. And so... But that doesn't mean, I'm not saying to go out here and live any kind of way. I'm not saying to go out here and live an immoral life, right? Go out here and fight someone and beat someone and rob a bank or that type of thing. If a Christian robbed a bank, okay, yeah, they're forgiven by God, but they're going to jail because there are consequences to the sin. Yeah, God forgives you. God forgives a Christian. But there are still consequences in the natural. If, if, a married, if a man that's a Christian and he's married and he commits adultery, then is he forgiven by God? Yeah, he's forgiven by God. But he now has to deal with the consequences of losing his wife and his family. So there are consequences to sin. We know this, right? But what I'm here to say is that Jesus has now freed us from the penalty of sin. And when we know that and we understand that, we want to love him even the more. And we want to live a life that glorifies him. We don't want to live a life just because we know we're free from the penalty of sin, that we don't want to live a life that's not going to give him glory. We want to live a life that's going to give him glory and where people are going to want to ask you, how do you have, how were you able to handle this situation? Then you can tell them about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that good news? We are free from the penalty of sin. So now we have eternal life and eternal inheritance. Now we can go to God without being embarrassed, right? Without feeling uh, condemned. We can go to God. We can go boldly, as the scriptures say. We can now come boldly to the throne of grace and receive grace and mercy. Isn't that wonderful? What a good word for today. Being free from the penalty of sin. The old system is gone, y'all. The old system is gone. The old system of laws and punishment, that's gone. We're now under the new covenant, a fresh covenant, a covenant that had never been done before. Jesus did a perfect work, right? You know, so don't go back to the old covenant. Don't go back under uh, laws and rules and you can't do this and you can't do that. Don't go back under old covenants, right? I love to study about the old covenant. Because it makes me appreciate the new covenant even the more. I love to read about the old covenant and read about the laws and different things that they could and couldn't do. But it makes me appreciate the new covenant. See, I like we will, I like new things. Don't you like new things? Don't you like? I, I like new things. You know, I was looking at some um my furniture in my den. It's it's old furniture, 20 years old got spots on it, and it looks old. 
But we recently picked out some new furniture that's going to be delivered soon. And it's new. And when I sat in that new furniture at the store, I was like, ah, oh, it sat so, it was so comfortable. And it looked so much better, right? So we're going to be out with the old furniture and we're going to welcome the new furniture that's come in. And that's just like the system, uh, uh, the two covenants. The old was here first, but now the old is obsolete, right? Now the new have come and replaced the old. And we can only give God, give Jesus all the glory and all the honor. For his perfect work. So now we can enjoy the benefits of the new covenant. That we now have a right relationship with him forever and ever and ever. Amen. I'm so glad you came back today. I'm so glad you're hearing this good news on today that's going to lift your spirits. And that's going to encourage you and help you make it through another day. If you're not saved, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Save me. Be my Lord and Savior. And if you mean that from your heart, then you are now a Christian forever. And you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And I would encourage you to come back and listen to my videos. Uh, also, go and study some of my uh, previous videos. I have plenty of videos on my channel that you can go and listen that will help you grow as a Christian while you're on this earth. Amen. And don't forget to sub subscribe, share, and like this video. Share it with someone that may need a word, need a fresh word, a, a, an encouraging word for today. Amen. Thank y'all so much for coming back to the beauty of grace. Take care and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.